Hey, don't know what happened there, guys. I guess we're resetting the stream. That's good. I get to put a face to these uh, voices I hear on the radio all the time. Yeah, sorry about that, Cat's video. I don't. I mean, I lost internet connection for like two seconds, and next thing I know, I got I got clapped. I don't know if the SEC clapped me or something, but yeah, it didn't uh, didn't work that well. So now I'm spamming notifications to everybody. Yeah, we hope a couple people come back. I know every time I, every time something like that happens, I lose subscribers. So. It's a big, uh, big risk. <laughs> I don't know why that happens sometimes. I just lose connection out of nowhere. Uh, the real estate question, yeah. So I don't, uh, I don't own any real estate. I don't even own my own house, but I, I have a few tens of thousands in REITs, so that's other people's properties that I have invested in. So you don't have to actually be the landlord, and you can still collect a dividend from it. So that's the fun one. Realty income, the ticker is O, is a good one. Uh, I think there's one more that I got in there somewhere. Yeah, Quinzel, I haven't seen that myself. But if you ever see something like that, you want to sell the leap and buy the shares. Yeah, if you can sell a call for more than 100 shares is worth, then do that as many times as you can before that opportunity goes away. Sell the leap, buy the shares, and you wind up with literally free money. Opportunities like that, they shouldn't pop up very often at all. So if you see something like that, take advantage of it. Yeah, welcome back, guys. I don't know what happened there. I lost all my view. Lost internet connection, all the viewers disappeared too, so I hope people start uh, start coming back a little bit. When I do become a full-time YouTuber, I need to invest in uh, better internet infrastructure at my house. I need a whole Amazon mesh. Hell yeah. Typically stonk top. I guess Bloomberg isn't really more entertaining though. It's more informative. I like both, honestly. If I like the stream, my port will double in a week. What's that mean? Oh, <laughs> he's putting a, a blessing on you guys. Yeah, like the stream and your uh, your calls will go in the money. But Quinzel, do you understand though, if you see a leaps that is more expensive than the cost of 100 shares, if you sell the leaps, it will give you enough money to buy 100 shares. You can do that, and you'll still have some cash left over. So even though you're going to get assigned on the leaps, very, very likely you'll get assigned on the leaps, you're still going to have a couple of shares left. Or you can just have free cash. Big opportunity. Oh, stonked up. Thank you again. My king always, always throws cash at me. Uh oh I'm out of cash. Let me get my money off the screen. Try that again. I didn't give you a good enough money gun. We're going to do that one more time. I live on the East Coast, LSAD. East Coast. There we go. I'm running out of battery over here or something. Your puts, your long puts will go in the money. Your short puts will stay out of the money. So in today, so stocks up over the past couple days we've seen. Let's see what's going on here. Let's pause our Bloomberg for a little bit and check markets. Let's see what's going on here. All right, so Bitcoin has actually gone up in the last few minutes since we've been talking. I don't know why I'm getting these weekly candles. A 
let's just reload that page and see if I fix this up. There we go. Okay. So the S&P 500 is still rising. Looks like we're actually pretty close to the highs of the day today. So really, really good sign how we're staying up above that 50-day moving average. So that's a really, really big one. Hey, Sam Kling is here. What's up, brother? That, that uh, share of Sam that I bought, Boston Beer Company, because you won the vote several times in a row, is down almost 60%. Can you believe that? The company that makes... Uh, was it? Not Truly's. Yeah, the company that makes Truly, the alcoholic seltzer, is down 60% since the pandemic. Shows you how much less people have been drinking. Stonked up. I'm going to take that advice. I'm going to keep that in mind. That CNBC has the more attractive anchors. Maybe not the smarter, but definitely the more attractive. Yeah, Shiba. Can I get Shiba on here? Shib to USD to tethers. I mean, that should be the same thing, right? Yeah, same shit. Yeah, this thing. Why am I getting? Can somebody like help me out? Why am I getting this like weekly chart? Where's my, uh, where's like my daily? Like it says weekly right there, but then. I can't figure out why it's giving me a weekly instead of a daily. If anybody's like an expert at this, let me know. <laughs> yeah, Stonk Dub is right. Seltzer, uh, Sam Adams got crushed after the Seltzer craze. The Boston Beer Company got destroyed. How are Strangles doing with the dip? With the dip? Now the dip is the dip is canceled, Squizzle. So during the dip, I had to roll down my call side several times, but I still ended up coming out with about a thousand dollars after it took a little while because I had to roll down that call side to make the gains. But I still was successful on that strangle. It's amazing, like I would have never thought that strangles can be that flexible, that you have that much control over the way the trade goes. I would always think, right, if the stock tanks or the stock spikes, then I would never be able to recover from it. It would just be a huge loss. But that's really not the case. You have so much flexibility to roll and maneuver. I have yet to lose on a strangle. And the one that I opened up right now, it looks like I'm going to go 12 for 12 on the straggle game. So Undivine Knight sent me, says noob, and threw me five bucks. So thank you very much. I don't know who the noob is here, but I appreciate you and you get the money gun once again. I wish I was like one of those huge streamers that can just like, <laughs> just stream for like seven hours a day. I just like do this all the time. Shoot my money gun and reload. Posted in crypto chat. All right, so let's check out what stonked up. Decided to post in the Discord instead of here for some reason. But in the crypto, we're posting crypto coliseum. There he is. So, you want me to announce this, or you want me to keep it a secret? But stonked up. It looks like he owns calls on Mara and MSTR. I don't know what MSTR is, but he's got some leaps. And he has made a significant amount of money today. Good for him. He just wanted to see the money go. Yeah, good, good stuff. Hey, anybody who's got calls, so let's look at Mara right now. So Mara is this is the one that I've been using. Other than um, other than Coinbase, I've been using Mara to take advantage of the crypto market without actually owning all of it in crypto, keeping it in my Merrill Lynch account, but still getting exposure to cryptocurrencies. So Mara, obviously extremely volatile. I mean, look all year, it's been up and down, up and down all over the place but the amount of the amount of um, premium that are on these call and put options is very very high so I mean look you can go from the 5th of April to the 17th of May so about 40 days and you've you know the stock loses half its value and then over the course of you know 33 you go 33 to 47 in the course of like a month I mean you're looking at like very significant amount of money here uh, click on the W on the top left right next to it all right so uh, Dude, you know how long that would have taken me to realize that there was an option there to do that? That would have taken me like all day. I'm clicking around over here to try to find like the daily and the weekly. Quidzel, thank you. If I could super chat you, I would do it. That would have taken me all day. Anyway, so you've got, you have a significant amount of volatility on something like Marathon. 
Marathon Digital Holdings. This is a cryptocurrency mining company. And they're expanding, they're getting more exa, what are they, exa hashes now. I think they're going to like the next one soon. I don't know even what comes after exo. But they they have a lot of firepower. And the volatility here makes this an extremely valuable wheel. And I've been getting you know 5% a month off of my investment into them. If I had known that the stock would have gone up like this, I obviously would have wheeled a huge number and pulled like you know 100% gain over the past three months. But of course I didn't know that. I'm just wheeling the $39 strike again and again and pulling money from it. And even down here where it stayed depressed for a while, it didn't even matter. I was still able to get like 3 to 4% of my investment every single month from it. It's incredible how much volatility there is in crypto and how much money you can make off of selling options on it. Stunked up put his entire Roth in Mara last Friday, 31,000, it hit 51,000 today. Congratulations, results not typical, that's all I'm saying. I wouldn't recommend putting your whole Roth into Mara, but I mean, for you, $31,000 is like pennies, right? So you can take the risk. I know you got a lot more than that in actual cryptocurrencies. Riot is another option. If, if you can't do Mara for some reason, Riot is another one. So they've actually like, why are they so low? Yeah, never mind, disregard. I don't know why Riot has taken such a big hit like that when the cryptocurrency market's been going up. I think they're losing uh, hash power versus Mara. So that might be affecting them. I don't think they were growing at nearly the same rate Mara was as far as their actual ability. Anastasio says, Any is also a good cryptocurrency mining company. I'm not familiar with this one. I know there's a lot of these. Sphere 3D, wow, they've been doing great. Good for them. So, LSAD, this is tradingview.com. Tradingview.com. I always use stock charts for a while, but you guys all hate it, so I'll use TradingView instead. This one's actually doing great. This one's on a really good dandy increase. Here was your golden cross right here, which looks like a worst time for a golden cross ever, but it it banked. It kept going. Uh, what, what happened with Gree? The Gree tards that got into on this Green, Greenwich, Greenage generation. I mean, support group, when it was SPRT, this thing had gone up to like, I think it was over $400 by the time it actually did its reverse split. But I mean, look at that crash though. I mean, looking from 59 all the way down to like the 20s very, very quickly. Yeah, here's that split. I think at one point it, it went over $500 a share back when it was support group. But this is, uh, I mean, this is ugly. I actually saw these guys on TV the other day. I was in uh, Williamsburg, Virginia, and it was playing at the hotel that people were protesting outside of Greenwich because there was so much environmental pollution there that even though they were in compliance legally, they weren't in compliance with the town wanted. So they were getting, they're getting picketed, they're getting their entrances blocked, and it's not looking good for Greenwich. <laughs> you know that Leonardo DiCaprio meme where he's got his beer and he's pointing at the screen? That was me. I was like, I heard of this company. Their stock got rocked. Now it looks like they're getting picketed too. It's an ugly deal. Uh, yeah, El said the, the crypto call options, this is, it's Ledger X. I'm not sure if it's .com. It might be. But it's dot, I think it's dot com. It's ledgerx dot something. And you can trade options on cryptocurrency there. Yeah, finance is right. All these high risk trades like Mara, those are all going to, they're going to go for a premium. And if you're trading Mara, you're going to get a high premium. But the risk is also substantial. I mean, that's why you wouldn't want to do this with a significant amount of your portfolio that you'd get hurt with. Unless you're stonked up, in which case you can throw your entire Roth into Mara without fear. So, good for him. Um, all right, let's come back to that. Let's check. Let me check triple Q. I want to see if we've broken the 50-day moving average because that'll be big. No, triple Q is. Are we even green for the day anymore? Or did it sell off? It looks like stocks have come down quite a bit so far, off of their highs today. Bitcoin doing great. Yeah, triple Q is still up by over a dollar, but it was uh, it was up by more than that. It actually opened higher, so we're on the lower end of the range. Quizzle says, no, just buy your own mining equipment and coins. Don't pay four times more for buying a mining stock. Yeah. Now, for people that actually know what they're doing, that is a good idea. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, so I'm selling options on my miners. Something I just started doing now is I'm helium mining now. So I got myself a Bobcat helium miner as part of the freeloader challenge, and it's not paying a whole lot. It's like a couple dollars a day. But with helium at its current price, it's a couple dollars a day. If helium takes off, then what I'm earning right now is going to explode with it. Uh, 
that's going to be part of the, the freeloader challenge episode. When I make it one day. <coughs> All right, let's check out Bloomberg. It doesn't look like there's going to be that many more people joining, so we might have to do the, the other sponsor. This is the one that I'm actually really excited about, so I will show you guys that one. Let's check out Bloomberg for a little bit first. Producer inflation backs off, so maybe we are transitory. We'll see. Because Jay Powell's a bro, that's why. Flattening of a yield curve and perhaps maybe lower yields on the long end as well, as we're all trying to think about what this means uh, for a Federal Reserve here. PPI today, CPI yesterday came in stronger. And of course, that means when you're out shopping at places like Macy's, well, your cost might go up. Let's read some news on Macy's right now. It's coming from Dow Jones saying that Jana Partners has sent a letter to the company's board saying it should separate its online unit. Dow Jones is reporting this, sending people familiar. Now, of course, I think my daughter is driving my wife crazy. I think that's what it is. I remember when Macy's was less than five dollars in the crypto crash. You know what leaps would have been if you bought like at the money leaps or even out of the money leaps? Zianis Kaplun dropped 120 grand on Micron at sixty-eight dollars. Wow, the price to earnings ratio is low at like 7.5. Selling calls and puts. There you go. Thanks, LSAT. I appreciate that. I picked the right time to start YouTubing in 2020. Everybody just stayed home from work and school and traded stocks all day. Uh, let's move on to something else here. Energy crisis. Yeah, let's talk about when my gasoline is three dollars a gallon. Metals. All right, we can talk metals too. Ah, here we go. Let's do this instead. Oil could hit one dollar. Let's click on some clickbait here. Give us your sense right now. You guys hear my dog upstairs? She's smacking this, the door because she wants to go outside. Enjoy my. I think my daughter's out there. This guy's got to fix his sound system. Francisco, can you hear me? Oh, sorry. It's, uh, your, your, your audio just got. Let's try that again. Go ahead. Okay. All right. So, yeah, so, so uh, we are seeing demand at around. Uh, I believe that oil is eighty dollars a barrel again. It was negative forty a year and a half ago. Yeah, Anastasios uh, CRM is a good one because Nancy Pelosi bought calls on it, so you know it's going to go up now. Francisco is a good name, though. Which is going to create even more demand. So, so the market's tightening. It's been tightening for a while. Uh, we could double the deficit into the winter months, uh, maybe triple it. And, uh, and that's the reason why prices for oil are, are going up. But still, remember, oil looks like a bargain when you look at European natural gas over $200 a barrel of oil equivalent. So let's talk about that substitution you just referred to between oil on the one hand and natural gas on the other. I've heard conflicting things. I mean, with so much demand for energy right now. I mean, you'd think that there's somebody would be pressing to take the pressure off, you know, like by increasing the supply. You know, I mean, OPEC has been trying to increase the price of oil for years. It looks like they've finally been able to get the demand that they needed. When is Kuwait going to start increasing supply against the Saudis' wishes? Yeah. 
Does anyone in here know why the United States has never joined OPEC? I mean, we do export oil, right? Is it because we don't have any state-owned enterprises? Dude's still talking. So Francisco here thinks that there will be no increase in supply. Let's see, what's oil doing? Let's, what's U.S. oil doing today? U.S. oil fund. So I think I won here at one point in like March of 2020. I guess it hasn't increased all that much. But man, look at that crash though. Jeez. We've got a long way to go on this thing. This is probably a good buy. OPEC has too many rival countries versus the U.S. I think a lot of it too is that we don't have any uh, we don't have any state-owned enterprises, so the U.S. doesn't really have the ability to tell the West Texas intermediate people that they have to stop drilling. I don't think we have that kind of control like they do in like Russia, or Kuwait, or uh, Saudi Arabia. Yeah, it would have to be a U.S. company joining it, and I don't think that would just be weird. If like what? What's an American one? Like Aramco? That wouldn't work. Bitcoin ETF. Did that go live yet? What is the ticker for the Bitcoin ETF? Bitcoin futures, Bitcoin group. Grace, I mean, I know about Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. But that's not what you're talking about, is it? Is it like crypto ETF? Or did it not go live yet? Crypto index, there's the index for it here. Wow, that's a really... It's really high. Yeah, I would love to buy a cryptocurrency index. Because, I mean, let's face it, I don't know all of the hot cryptos to buy until it's too late for me to get in on the ground floor. But if it's somebody's entire job to know that, then they could be very successful at it. And I would gladly let them invest my money for their little fees. D's is the... Of course it is. No, it's not, not trading yet. Bito, live next Tuesday. Now that makes sense. Yeah, I would absolutely tune in to a Bitcoin ETF or a cryptocurrency ETF for that matter. Because like I said, I don't know which cryptocurrencies to buy really. I mean, I know there's a handful I got my eye on, but I am a novice when it comes to cryptos. So I would love to have somebody whose job it is specifically to pick cryptocurrencies for me with my money and everybody else's and grab assets. I will gladly pay a 1%, 2% fee in order to get that. That's fine. So far we don't have that. I know Kathy Wood was looking for one of those. I know there's other people that have been trying to make a Bitcoin ETF for a long time. And I think the closest we've got is the Bit, um, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Not live yet, just approved. Yeah, let's do that. All right, let's talk about SCC needs to confirm. Okay. So Justin Saylor wants to get in on some leaps. All right, now let's let's talk, yeah let's talk about that. I'm kind of done talking about uh, Bloomberg right now. So let me get my Merrill Lynch back open because I'm 100% sure that it's it is, let me my privacy, because it's timed out by now. But let's get Merrill Lynch open here. I'm gonna look at some of the leaps that I have, and then you guys, let's uh, let's share our thoughts on how one could invest aggressively for the long term. All right, we'll do this, and then we gotta do the sponsor, because I can't move on with my day until until I do that, because they pay me excessively. All right, so here is my here's my portfolio once again, looking pretty good today, up about 3,700. 
So that's, that's real good. I'm back above 200,000 unrealized for the first time in over a month. But all right, here's the leaps that I have. So I've got leaps on LRCX right here, $500 strike. A good alternative to this one, if you don't have $11,000, is what is it ASML or A A M A T M A T is another good option for it. Um, same type of deal. They are um, they make the machines that other companies need in order to make semiconductors. So there's not a lot of competition in there, but that's a that's a really good one. LRCX. Uh, what else I got here for leaps? Snap I think is a great company. They're growing every year. They've beaten their projections. Growing revenue. They just swung to a profit. Really really good option for leaps. So you can get them relatively cheaply too. I mean, they're not a whole lot. I think it's $1,300 I got these $50 leaps. So you can get an at-the-money leaps for about 1300 bucks and it doesn't expire for like two years. So good option there too. Uh, and then of course, own spy leaps. Don't ask questions, just own spy. Spy and triple Q, all of them, they're just this raging river flowing in one direction. Now if your job is to get down the river, you do not need to go and build a car. You need to get on that river as soon as you can. You want to become a millionaire, get some spy in your portfolio. And if you don't want to spend tons and tons of money on le on uh, shares, do it with leaps. So I got these leaps at the two hundred and fifty dollars strike. They were in the money when I bought them. But they were, I think the spy was it was like last June. So I've been holding on to these for a while. But it's just it's money just flowing in every every month. It's worth more than it was the last month. So I've looked at already tripling with this. Get spy leaps if you can. That's the point. Uh, own the indices. What else? I got the Palantir leaps. This is really cheap. It's only fourteen hundred bucks for Palantir leaps. I actually used Palantir at work when I was, uh, well, I still use it at work. I'm still a cartographer. Um, I used to use it more frequently, but I know a little bit about the company, and it is good. I can tell you that. I can't tell you too much about it because I don't know the intricacies behind it, but it's a great product. So consider Palantir for your portfolio if you need some leaps. Um, if there's a dividend company, don't buy leaps on it because then you're going to be fighting against that dividend all the time. Buy shares of the dividend companies. Buy leaps in the growth companies. And if you want to, you can sell PMCCs against them. Like I've got these five leaps here at the 50 and 60 strike for Snap. They don't expire until 2023. So between now and then, I expect that I'm going to keep selling covered calls over the you know month, month at a time, two months at a time, and pulling money. So today at expiration, I'll get about $250 off of this that I can then use to buy more shares. It's only going to get me like, what, five? No, not even. Like four. Less than four shares. Uh, the air kicked on. Let me know if the sound of that is going to give you a hard time. I can turn off that uh, that air kicking on. But if it doesn't bother you guys, I'll leave it on. Um, if you guys have any questions about what's in my portfolio, I mean, let me let me know. Or if you guys want to look at some stocks, we can do that. There's a couple of people coming in here now. I think I'll we'll do the uh, this the sponsor in a little bit. This is the one that I'm actually really excited about. I've been looking, I've been looking and looking and looking for a an organization that's doing what I think he can do with NFTs. And this, I finally found the one, so I reached out to them and asked them if they would want to pay me, and they said, not really. I said, please, and they said, yes. So I'll tell you guys about that in one minute. We'll come back to that one. Um, Small Gook just sent me a $2 super chat, so thank you, you get the money gun. Uh-oh. <coughs> Low on ammo. You're getting your money gun. There we go. Thank you very much for the super chat, I appreciate you. Thank you, small gook. Zanis says, leaps for triple Q. Which date and strike is reasonable? Go as long dated as you can and buy at the money. That's what I would do. That's what I did with my, I bought slightly in the money with my spy leaps, but I think triple Q is just gonna keep rising. So buy like, the, I think they're trading at 2024 now. You can buy leaps that don't expire until 2024. Get those and get an at the money strike. Spend the money and you're gonna own like 90 shares worth for a fraction of what it would normally cost you. Add CRM to my portfolio. I think I would like to add CRM, Anastasios. So it's not on the immediate target list, but that is something I would like to do. Uh, and the platform this is on LSAD is Merrill Lynch. What do I think about BABA? Um, I think BABA is maybe good for the long, long term, but I don't know. It's not something I would want to buy in the near term. And Slunky. All right. Quizzle says, do you have a maximum IV you would buy leaps at? They seem very expensive at the moment. So I mean, they. I don't know. I mean, it depends on if you think IV is going to stay high. That's the bigger question. Not what it's currently at. Because over a leaps, I mean, Vega does matter a lot. I mean, don't get me wrong. But it's going to go up and down over the life of that leaps. So if you can buy it when volatility is low, that's very good. If you can't buy it when volatility is low, don't stress too much about it. Don't stress too much about it. Get what you need. And the delta will more than compensate for it over the long term. So Finance says 80 
delta in the money is is good. I think that's really good for a poor man's covered call. But if you're buying leaps for speculation, I think you can get a little bit more aggressive and buy the lower delta. If you want to sell PMCCs, I do agree that between 70 and 90 is a really good target. I think 80 is, is fine. That's a really good one. I've gotten a little bit more aggressive recently. I used to do 90 delta. Now I'll sell covered calls against a 70 delta. You just got to go a little bit further out the money. I don't know anything about LSPD theory. I'm sorry. Huge drop recently. Shorts are throwing shade accusations. Maybe it's deserved. I mean, don't assume it's just bashing. It could be very well deserved. That negative on it. Corporate Raider says you lost $20,000 after discovering Wall Street bets. Yeah, well, you're not the only one, I'll tell you that. <laughs> How deep in the money should the PMCC be? Yeah, about 80 delta. I think that's probably what Finance was referring to. <laughs> A good $1,000 YOLO play? For $1,000, what do you guys think? He's got $1,000 and he wants to YOLO it. I would buy a call debit spread on Mara. That's what I would do. Get like a one strike wide, throw a thousand dollars at it, you'll get a ton of spreads. Get like 15, 20 spreads. If it hits, you'll triple your money. Dole PLC. I don't know too much about Dole. Is that like the, the fruit company? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know anything about Dole. Alright, hey, let's um. Let's do the sponsor now, so I'm actually really excited about this one. Uh, I'm going to pull up their trailer for it. So anyway, this company is called Crypto Astronauts, and I've been looking for a while now to try to find a worthwhile gaming NFT. Now, I've been looking into NFTs because you kind of have to if you want to stay up to date on what the crypto market is doing. And right now, it's a lot of those... Um, it's a lot of those, like, JPEG type that this is going to be a key into our Discord group. This is going to be a... A key to an exchange. If you own the NFT, you can participate. And like those are fun. They're fine. They're kind of cool, I guess. But they're not really hitting the mark that I need to see. They're not progressing. It's just more and more people making more and more adjective animals. I think Quidsley said it the best. Adjective animal, like like goofy raccoons. There, there's so many of them now, and you never know which one, if any, are actually going to pop off. So I've been looking into NFTs, and I think music is going to be a really good one. If you own the NFT responsible for the music, like the MP3 or the MP4 of the music for it, uh, that NFT, that is worth something. If you, and then the real big one, I think NFTs are going to have a really big part of the gaming industry. All right, put that on pause for a second. Stonked up, thank you again. And Bitcoin must be doing something good if you just paid me again and said Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Let's check that real quick and come back to this gaming NFT thesis that I have. Oh, that's Bitcoin futures. Bitcoin USD. Let's see. Did they spike again? They did. Oh my god. It's up $1,000 again. They just keep going. Uh, anyway, so about this NFTs thing. And thank you for the super chat again, by the way. You paid me like 30 bucks now. I appreciate you. Now, when it comes to NFTs in games. So imagine, all right, people are in... I've never played World of Warcraft, but I know a little bit about it. World of Warcraft, all right, you've got items that you use in-game to fight other players. Now, I don't know if you can even buy those items from other players. I think you have to get them, like, through the game itself. But if you want to spend 40 bucks, you can get yourself some decent equipment to use in the game to play against other players. Now, all these pay-to-earn, uh, play-to-earn NFT games so far, they've been really low-level. Nobody actually wants to play the game. There's no World of Warcraft where you can buy an NFT from another person and apply that to your character in-game in order to be competitive. To facilitate something like that, you actually have to want to play the game. And I've been searching for a long time to try to find a game that people are actually going to want to play and use NFTs as a medium where players can trade with each other with real-life cryptocurrency or real-life money and then use that NFT for an item in-game and actually make you a more competitive player. So finally, I, f I thought I found one with Plants vs. Undead, but that was bogus. Nobody wants to play Plants vs. Undead. It's just... I don't know, it's not a scam, it's just not a very good game. Found this one, finally, called Crypto Astronauts, and I said, are they interested in marketing with me? And they were like, yeah, kind of, ish, maybe, not really. But then we solicited and we eventually came to an agreement. They would pay me $300 and then some NFTs once the game is fully launched. Uh, and then I could play the game and use it like that. And then I'd get, I, they paid me $300 in Dogecoin, which I then converted into Cosmos. But anyway, here is their trailer. It's really, really, I think this is looking pretty exciting. So this is what they've got. <laughs> it 
So there you go. There's their trailer for the game. I'll turn that, I'll turn the volume off and play it one more time so you guys can see while I talk about it. So what they're obviously creating here is a red versus blue game. So it's going to look like something like um, either League of Legends or Command and Conquer, maybe Age of Mythology or Age of Empire, or something like that. They're creating this game where you actually want to play. They're putting the game first, and that's what matters. So they're very serious about their production. Um, I'm not thinking. Am I thinking of uh, League of Legends, um, Starcraft? That's or Minecraft, Starcraft. That's what I'm thinking of. Where you mine the Vespin gas or whatever. That's the game that they're creating, and people are actually going to want to play it. That's what makes this exciting for me. So when I see an opportunity like this, knowing that they are putting an NFT system in the game where you play, you win NFTs and then you can use them to either play with in-game or you can sell those NFTs to other players. So that I think, I mean if you look at this trailer here, you look at the last minute, obviously blue is going to win because he's coming down a lot faster than red is coming. So we've got the bear going to win here, but that doesn't mean that the game is going to be bad. It just means that they're winning in this trailer. So blue team looking like they're going to win. Um, seeing something like this where if the team is actually putting the game first, where they're going to make a League of Legends style program um, and then use NFTs to facilitate transactions between players. That's something I can see the gaming industry going into. I mean I used to play RuneScape back in the day and you could buy items in game, that's no problem. But you're always going through Jagex, you're going through RuneScape. You can't trade things for free anymore. I haven't played the game in years so I don't know if it's changed a lot. But you can't actually, it's, it's, not, it's not a player to player interaction. You're always playing through the game. With something like this where you earn NFTs in-game, like this axe is going to be an NFT. If you want another player to have this, or another player wants to buy it from you, they give you some, uh, I think it's a on the ASW blockchain, something like that, they would pay you, they would receive the NFT, and then it would apply to the game. So really, really cool. Um, I'm excited about this. They haven't fully launched yet, but they're putting the game first, which is what matters. They're not putting money first, they're putting making a valuable game first. So I've been talking about these guys for a little while now, but I think you guys get the idea. Let's play the trailer one more time for the people that just joined. Really, really cool what they're doing here. So even if they didn't pay me, I still would have... I would still be using this for my freeloader challenge. I'd probably stream it a couple times. But somehow, I convinced them to give me money as well to promote this. So I'm very happy with my own success, and I'm looking forward to a game like this. It's going to have some kinks, but I would not be surprised at all to see... You know, over the next few years, you could definitely tell the bear was about to win there. But over the next few years, I could definitely see this go in places. Um, they do have a Discord group that I would love to join, but I don't have the link for it, otherwise I'd post it here. But this is Crypto... What's the name here? Yeah, check them out. Follow them on Twitter. Check them out in their Discord if you can get in there. I'll, uh, I'll post it to my YouTube community. But I, I think that the NFT industry is going to start leaning more toward games. And I think music is still untapped. But it has to go in that direction because this JPEG thing, it's not going to get anybody anywhere. But um, like I've said several times now, if you could think, I'm thinking about RuneScape because I used to play that back in like 07. If you could NFT that item, trade it between players, you've now got a very exciting ecosystem where there's people playing the game not only to play it, but also to earn. And something like that that people actually want to play, like StarCraft or League of Legends, is going to go a lot farther with an NFT system than these things like Plants vs. Undead that are just putting the crypto before the game. Nobody actually wants to play it, they just get bored when they stop earning. Make a real good game, and all of a sudden you've got people that are very interested in it. So they're calling themselves an exclusive community right now, I think that's just in reference to their Discord. Once this goes public, I'll probably announce it with some fanfare, because I'm going to want to play it. And I'm also going to want to earn the NFTs in-game so I can sell them as part of the freeloader challenge. Well, that's where I'm at. All right, good. I didn't actually... I thought everybody was going to leave when I started doing that sponsorship. But it's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool thing. So I'm excited to work with them. Uh, I don't actually have a launch date yet. But I'm th I think before the end of the year, they're going to be fully, fully operational. So expect to see that game in a freeloader challenge video. Because I'm going to be looking for some money. Um, describing economies like Team Fortress 2, and I don't know what CSGO is. That might be what I'm not too familiar with their economies, but I think with most games like that, you can't transact player to player unless you're going through the game developer to do it. There's no NFTs behind it, so it's not a free exchange. You have to lose something or it's either somehow bogged down. You can't give items to another player. Um, that's usually what happens in stuff like that. Now, I don't know if that's the case with Team Fortress 2. 
maybe it is. Um, but what I'm describing is a truly free player-to-player -player transaction, like you're moving cryptocurrencies between each other. But that's what I'm looking forward to. So uh, again, that is Crypto Astronauts. I don't have their Discord link, otherwise I would pin it. But I hope they give that to me soon so I can republish it. <coughs> I will add it to the uh, description of this video, and then I'll publish it on the YouTube community. So, and I'm going to try to, I'll see if they'll promote further with me. I mean, I'm obviously actually pretty excited about the game. But if I can get them to give me some more Dogecoin, I would also be pretty happy with that too. Uh, and just for disclosure, because I know a couple of people just tuned in, the payment for that sponsor was $300 of Dogecoin and three NFTs for when the game comes out, I can use them in game. So less than I would usually accept for a sponsorship, but I'm excited about the game, so I'll take it. All right, let's um, let's see what Triple Q is doing here. Watch a little bit more of Bloomberg, and then I'll probably wrap it up for the day. I want to try to finish the um. I want to try to finish the Dank Trades video either today or like very very early in the morning tomorrow because I want to publish it on Monday, but it's a 17 minute video. So it may even get longer than that by the time I'm done with it. It's a pretty long one. It's going to take me a while to edit. All right, we are still not above the 50-day moving average. we got to get, we need another dollar before we do. But we have sustained the daily gain so far, which is very important to me that we're seeing this doji end up green for the day. We're able to sustain the gains that we've seen so far. That would be, that would be nice if we can get above the 50-day next week because then the, the we are back in business. Let me see, can I get my... What's going on with my strangle here? So I'm up about four, a little over fourteen hundred, almost fifteen hundred dollars now. My goal is to get about fifty percent gain. We're not quite there yet, but out of this, what was the total value on it when I sold here? So about twenty four hundred. That's not right. I think I sold this total position for like three thousand. This current value. We have to add up four times that. I think I sold this thing for like a little over $3,000. So my goal here would be to sell this position for about an $1,800 gain. So we're not quite there yet, but we're getting there. All right, a couple comments coming in here. So Robert Roundtree says, you gotta chop wood. Okay, what's the point of chopping wood? South Park Minecraft reference. Dang, dang, dang. Da, 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 moved. Zanis Kaplun says, I hope, am I saying that right? Zanis says, I hope altcoins go to the moon after Bitcoin reaches higher highs. Got a stack of XMR, what's that? Monero, and I don't know what Uni is. And Bull Rocket says, "Damn, Bitcoin doing really well. It helps recover my option loss. <laughs> Got destroyed and lost everything about." 50K. Bull Rocket, what were you trading that you lost all your money on options? Like, do you guys not keep about at least twenty-five percent of your portfolio in ETFs? I mean, if I look at my portfolio breakdown here, let me show you my portfolio breakdown from Merrill Edge. Let me get myself I'll get a minute of privacy here, and I'll get it up so I don't dox myself. I think there is something here though that actually shows me like my portfolio story and we can look at the whole thing. Uh, da, 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 da. Read my portfolio story. So this is actually breaks down. Yeah, okay. Well, this is cool. All right, so we'll look at let's look at this together. Um, this is so Merrill Lynch is actually really cool cuz they actually give me this information. So, let me see here. So, all right, here's my cumulative return. It's almost triple. Triple Q is my largest investment at 26%. Uh, my environmental score is average. D estimated income. So over three months, it's estimating that much in dividend. But let's, let's see here. Okay, historical account balance. What I'm looking for here is the pie charts that actually show me what I have in my portfolio. How am I allocated? I think it's this is what I'm looking for. So. Okay, so this is the way I kind of allocate it. So equities is obviously the most of it, but large cap growth, equities blend. So this right here is my ETFs mostly. So if you don't have around 25% of your portfolio minimum in ETFs, then I think you're probably holding too much risk in your portfolio, unless you're like a really active trader who trades every day and has a good track record. But holding 25% in ETFs, I mean, you can't go wrong with an index ETF. You're going to make money. And then these large cap growth, I think this is mostly equities, but a lot of that, or it's, of course it's mostly equities, but I think it's mostly tech stocks is what I mean. Um, but holding on to a blend, like this 25% minimum, I think you're in good shape. Um, let's see, there was something else here. It gives me like a nice bubble chart. I want to see. All right, so here's my equity holdings by sector. So I'm a big tech investor, so almost 50% of my portfolio is in technology. And then split through the rest amongst it. 
Um, but equities blend right here. Again, 18% of it just blended equities across the board. You can't lose when you have something like that. Like you're going to lose money if you just keep throwing it into options all the time, unless you're just selling. But you should have some stocks in your portfolio. I mean, let's be real. Yeah, crypto. You got. You want to link to the crypto astronauts, man. And that's the thing. Like, I don't have their Discord link, and I didn't realize that I don't have it until I, I mean, until I, I started doing this stream and realized, shit, I don't have their link. I'm gonna get that to you guys though. So, Paulius, uh, just check my crypto community, my crypto community, my YouTube community uh, posts. And I will post their link there when they actually give it to me. Um, I've only been talking to them via uh, email and Telegram so far, which is how he sent me some of the promotional material. But I don't have their link, and I want to get it from them because I want to join it and see what they've got going on there too. They've also boasted of sneak peeks in their Discord, so if you join that, you can see more of what they're working on at the time. Um, I mean, it's a serious game, and I want to see what they've got going on there too. So I'm definitely going to get you that potential spam. All right, let's see what else is here. Portfolio. I, all right, so this is what I was looking for. This actually shows you the breakdown of my portfolio based on what I'm holding, and this is going to factor in all of the ETFs. It's going to factor in what so what I'm actually exposed to. So Apple is my biggest holding, and you can see sometimes it breaks it down for me. Okay, by actually holding Apple shares and calls, it is that Apple alone is 16% of my portfolio, and then I have an additional. Seventeen thousand dollars worth of Apple by holding Triple Q, an extra three thousand by holding QILD. These are dividend right here, and of course I have a leveraged one, three hundred seventy-three dollars. So sixteen percent of my portfolio alone is just Apple shares, and then so about twenty percent overall is Apple. And then LRCX, I'm way overweight in. Twelve percent of my portfolio is just Apple share, uh, LRCX shares and leaps, and then by holding SMH, I own some. QILD, QQQ, I own a little bit of additional by it. But that's a, that is a really overweight position. And seeing it like this, showing me that I'm almost 13% of my portfolio in LRCX, that's high. But I bet if you look at a lot of your portfolios, you'll see something like this too. Uh, Coinbase, 6% right there. And then I have a little bit of exposure through ETFs. PayPal, Coke, Prudential. I mean, it breaks it down pretty nice. I don't own any shares of Google. And yet, 1.26 or about 1.5 percent of my portfolio is just Alphabet. So by owning Triple Q, I have about six thousand dollars invested in Google, and I think Google is probably on here too somewhere. But this is a really cool feature that they provide you. So Amazon, I don't own any shares of Amazon, and yet I've got about three percent of my portfolio in Amazon. So it shows you the power of being able to diversify that way. Let's see. Oh, what else we got? Robert Roundtree bought, he paper bought 50,000 in Bitcoin, or a blend of them, blend of cryptocurrencies. And now he's got 495,000. There you go. Too bad it was paper. All right, allocation drift. So I was pretty cash heavy right at the bottom of the market and then invested it all over the next two months. I've been pretty invested since then. I don't even know what else they got here. An aggressive portfolio should look like this, according to Merrill Lynch, where you've got 10% of your portfolio in fixed equities. That didn't happen for me. I've got less than 1% in fixed income, which is mostly PFFD. And I think that's probably, I mean, they can keep going with this story as long as they want to, but yeah, bought, 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 reinvested, reinvested. It's probably not necessary to look at all these details, but that's the story of my portfolio. Anyway, I mean, the key takeaway from what I'm just showing you guys now is Keep some of your portfolio in ETFs, especially indexed ETFs. Now oh, this is interesting. I don't even know how to use this. Keep it in indexed ETFs and you can't blow yourself up with bad trades. All right, investment income. So here's my dividends, monthly, I guess. I mean, some people, they really bash dividends, but getting this, like, you know, reliably, I mean, this, having that foundation under you with fixed income is pretty darn cool. I mean, some people bash it because they, they say, all right, you've got 30 something thousand dollars invested in QILD. You can make more money by wheeling triple Q. And they're correct, you can. But having a pretty much guaranteed $300 of income every month is worth something. There is intrinsic value in the reliability of it. So I like having some dividend portfolio. These are all my dividend portfolio, most of them. These are the ones that are paying me this month. Uh, and I guess that. That's about it for what I want to show off. Um, 
I know some people have, because we have 70 concurrent viewers and 1,100 people have checked it out. So I'm going to play the, um, this is the sponsored segment one more time from, um, from Crypto Astronauts, which is a gaming, an NFT facilitated game that they're putting the game first and they're making it really cool. So I'm excited for this. I'm going to play it one more time for the people that just joined. They're making like a World of Warcraft League of Legends type game that you can earn NFTs by playing and then you can use those NFTs for items in game or trade them with each other. So really cool. I'll play the, their trailer one more time and we'll wrap this up. each other but see it's on the Solana blockchain is how they're facilitating this so you can see the S verb right there. That's it. Alright so we'll wrap that up here now. Um, anyway like I've said really excited about that game somehow I encouraged them to actually manage to get them to pay me to promote it even though I was going to do it anyway um, for $300 of Doge and uh, some NFTs. But anyway um, I guess that's, that's it for the day we'll wrap this up here. I'm going to be working on my Dank Trades video over the next couple days. I'm finishing it either today or this weekend 100% and I'm publishing it on Monday because so I wanted to get that video out for a while. Um, and we'll just watch the market. Mark, everything's going to expire today for me. A whole bunch of options that'll all get reinvested into more stuff. So I hope you guys are enjoying the bull market over the last couple days too and you didn't go all the way down into puts because if you did, RIP. Don't bet against JPOW. Uh, Dive Cook says there is a new YouTube video on their channel, Crypto Astronauts. Okay, so check them out on YouTube, Crypto Astronauts, in the pinned comment up at the top. So, all right, you'll probably be seeing more of them in the future. That's all I'm saying. All right, well, thank you guys all for tuning in. I'm going to end the stream here. I really appreciate you guys, and especially those of you that super chatted me. Thank you so much. We'll do one more money gun for you. We're running out of battery. Oh no. Anyway, thank you guys so much for all the super chats and for tuning in with me. Sorry we got interrupted on that stream before, but I will see you guys next time and expect a video from me over the weekend, or on Monday rather.